Week one in the books, first full week coming up. Ed DeRosa about to dish with the Paddock Prince, David Levitch, and David, before we get to week two with uh, some heavy hitters expected in some of the stakes later this week, a recap on week one, and I thought it was pretty tough. Uh, for me personally, I singled Casa Creed, so I felt pretty good about that, and then totally uh, blew up everything in the Sanford the Shilerville was tough. Uh, both one to five favorites on Saturday lost. It seemed tricky. It did. It was, I think, yesterday and Friday were washout cards, so I wouldn't put much stock into those. But, yeah, there was some, definitely some big upsets. Saratoga, I feel like, has – I'm sure it happens at every track, but you just don't notice it as much because it's not <laughs> Saratoga. Like, I'm sure it happens at Belmont and Aqueduct, but these upsets that happen at Saratoga, they just seem – I mean, you got one to five shots that look like – That's nickname, right? Yeah, no, you're like one to five cinches. Like gold sweep looked like about as good on paper as you could possibly look in a race. Blows the break, 50 to one shot wins. A maiden wins the Scourville for a trainer that hasn't won a graded stakes in like five years. It's just, it's, it's I mean, it's just, been, it was no, a little I mean, random. The other one to fives in Italian. And uh, I mean, I thought she looked invincible on paper, uh, given the short field, given most of the other horses were her stable mates given her speed advantage. I mean, I guess she gave a little bit of weight. Uh, you probably don't want to hear this. Maybe Flavian Pratt made the difference. I don't know. I, I'm still stunned she lost. I, I don't I – mean, I, I, knew, I knew the results when I watched the replay, and turning for home, I was like, how does she get beat? Yeah, she shouldn't have lost. I actually did – I actually thought the only horse that had a legit – I thought it was a 10% chance to beat her was White Bean. Because the other Philly that he had was coming off that big gold rail win on Belmont Day. And then I'd never, I've never liked Fluffy Sox. So I thought if there was any horse that could do it, I played a straight 2-5 in that race. Because I thought that was the only horse that had a chance. Obviously, I didn't win because it didn't come 2-5. But if there was going to be any Chad horse in that race, I thought it was her. It was interesting how good White being broke and how close she was to the pace, though. I mean, she was right on it. She never – it was a great ride. He never let Irad get away from her. And she didn't set the fastest fractions, but – 48s, I mean, that's, I feel like maybe if he would have opened up a little more, it probably could have helped her, but that's kind of how she ran in the just a game and it worked out. So I'm sure they were thinking the same thing. I saw Chad said it was a little softer than they thought, but I don't think she had an excuse, to be honest. It won no, five. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, the other one just came and got her. Well, speaking of jockeys, Pratt and Ortiz, uh, no surprise to know that they're doing some good work, uh, but Jose Ortiz, and we'll get to the reason why. He has so many wins. He's seven for 28, uh, fourth by HRN Impact. Uh, Ricardo Santana, who had a rough meet last year, his one for eight uh, came as somewhat of a surprise. So he has a high impact, low ROI, though. Uh, Tyler Gaffleon finally got off the duck. Um, you know, it's, it's obviously early. Look at Joel's ROI. It's huge. <laughs> yeah. 23 to one winner in that turf race. He hadn't ridden a lot. Of, he's only ridden 11 races. So I guess 11, if you have yeah. a $48 winner, that helps. No, it'll be, uh, obviously this will, you know, be massage, but uh, I read Ortiz 24% winning a bunch of races. He's on good horses though. They, they do get beat occasionally. Uh, but yeah, Jose Ortiz and uh, we have a trainer graphic as well. So we'll know the, the reason why, uh, um, not that he hasn't had anything to do with it, but Jose Combo opening week. Yeah, I mean, Jose's going so well right now, not just at Saratoga, but he basically won the Belmont meet because of Linda Rice. I mean, I think Linda Rice won 30-some races to Belmont. I'm sure Jose rode 25 of them, I would say, because <laughs> Les Cano was out a while. And, yeah, Jose, if, if Linda Rice is going well, Jose Ortiz is going to be at the top, in, in my opinion. I don't know if Linda Rice can win the meet, but the way she's going right now, she's – She's just making all the right moves with all her claiming horses, and she's winning so many races in bunches, and Jose has just been the benefit benefactor of it. Yeah, and there you see uh, Linda on top. And again, this or near the top, this is by HR and Impact, so Mark Hennig with his, his two winners, uh, both at decent prices uh, at the top, and uh, a lot of offers still among uh, top trainers by starts, but it is early, and none of those names, I don't, none of those names shock me. Uh, in terms of like, oh, I can't believe Diodoro didn't win a race among his five starts, but always uh, the duck report, uh, always something interesting. And then Pletcher, he is two for eight, uh, but man, they must be 
Hint, well, one of the wins was what pirate at two to five. Well, Dreamlike was one to five, two to five on um, Friday in the second race, and then Pirate mm-hmm. Pirate was um, four to five, three to five. So yeah, yeah. both has been super short. There you go. That explains that. Uh, but yeah, all the usual names uh, early in the meet, so nothing too much to read into that. And uh, I didn't create a graphic, uh, but did want to note that shippers from Churchill Downs have yet to win and horses who had their last workout at either Churchill or Churchill Downs Training Center yet to win as well. Keeneland has produced a couple winners, but yeah. none from Churchill. Is that going to be a meat long trend, do you think, or just sort of an opening week vibe? I don't know. It's still early. I don't know how many horses once the meat really gets going either. I'll be shipping in from Churchill because, you know, the Brad, like Brad Cox hasn't even run a horse yet. So right. I think his only entry scratched on Sunday. So you'll have an Asmussen hasn't really, there's only been a few two-year-old, one two-year-old race in each division, I think. So once these races pick up with two-year-olds, I think you'll see a lot of horses that have been working at Saratoga already because of the high powered barns that haven't run anything yet. So I wouldn't put too much stock into that. Yeah. Joe Sharp had a, um, first time starter i'm pretty sure that was his like first first time starter at saratoga he was like over 13 the past five years but mm-hmm. that always working at keeneland that shipped in and won and won yep well this week uh, a lot of uh, eyes on monmouth they have the haskell three-year-old males they also had an older female race that drew searchers expected to draw search results the molly pitcher she gets away from clarier they've tussled this year and a new name added to the mix well not new to horse players and horse fans, but new to this season. Nest expected to make her four-year-old debut in the Shoe V. There was really no match in my mind between her and, and Clarier last year. Clarier being older, definitely finished better than her in the Breeders' Cup Distaff. I would expect Nest to be favored here. Is that an opportunity on Clarier, or do you think Nest is caught up to the older females? I think it would be extremely stupid if she was a favorite, but they're gonna everybody's gonna go see that her two dominant wins last year were at Saratoga and she's got kind of like a following. So she's gonna be way lower than she should be. I, I guess Clarier will probably be four to five on the morning line and Nest will be six to five, but mm, yeah, I agree I, with you. I would think Nest will be favored. Do you really I don't know. She Clarier is what she's won the Apple Blossom and the Phipps. So Yeah. I don't no, know. I mean, Clarier, really the resume this year, and, and again, she did beat her last year, but that was sort yeah. of four versus three. It's a little different now, but. I see what you're saying, but. Yeah. I, I, no, and you, you could be right. I just, I would never, ever bet Nest in this race over Clarier. Now, if Nest runs a really good second in this race, and second off the layoff in the personal instant would probably be the time you, depending on how she runs, would be the time to play her, but I would never take her as the favorite in this race. But honestly, with her following and her two wins at Saratoga and Irad and Pletzer, she could she could be very close to favoritism. I don't know if she'll go. It'll be very close. Well, and uh, I would say this is a year that lacks uh, a lot of sexiness in most of the divisions. Three-year-old male, I think, is interesting. Uh, but, you know, older male, the sprinters. Hers terrible. Whatever. But older females, you know, with the, a healthy nest, Clarier, search results, secret oath, uh, you know, some others out there could actually be interesting. Yeah, you got, I, I mean, Delmar opens Friday, which I'm sure we'll discuss in a second, but you'll have some horses out there with Baffert. I'm sure there hasn't really been much vibes um, really going on with California racing, obviously, since San Anita huh. Derby Day. So I haven't heard much about anything out there, but hopefully some horses out there can continue to develop because, yeah, the older Philly and Mayor division, it really needs Ness to be good because – Claire is a major, obviously, way on top right now because search results is a good horse, but she can't ever win the big races. Secret O's gone a little sour. I'm sure she's waiting to run in the personal incident. I don't know that for a fact, but it seems like it. So it would be good if Ness could um, boost her up that division a little. Yeah, and uh, as you noted, Delmar does open Friday, a quiet weekend on the West Coast racing-wise this past week, uh, but we did get some news about Golden Gate. Fields expected to close, uh, consolidate the racing at Santa Anita. Hard to argue that Santa Anita might, I mean, they're probably going to have better field size. I don't know what this means for the overall health of the industry out there, though. Yeah, I don't know either. I mean, in the field size, I'm sure it'll get better, but won't a lot. Of, I could be dead wrong about this. Won't a lot of these horses go to Emerald Down type places because can they compete? I don't know. Maybe when the circuits, they have no choice, but. When you look at a Golden Gate allowance race compared to a San Anita allowance race, I mean, you don't have Bob Baffert at Golden 
gate. So it's going to be a huge upgrade for a lot of these horses. So I guess they'll just have to be placed a lot lower, but I guess they're not going to have any options. Honestly, I like Golden Gate. It was always fun to play the Golden Hour pick four and some of those bets in the winter. Like it was fun to have those. Sad to see a place like that go. I know California out of Hollywood and now they're losing Golden Gate. So it's kind of diminishing out there. Yeah, no, I'm, I just, you know, put racetracks in major metropolitan areas. I feel is a, a positive. Uh, and unfortunately, we've lost quite a few just in the last 15 years let alone a generation. So yeah, that, that to me is, is going to leave a hole. Uh, and long-term, I, I don't know what kind of fix it is overall for California, but it is Del Mar opening week. So there will be at least some optimism about that and some bigger races to look forward to. And the Breeders' Cup is on the West Coast this year. Does that make you pay attention to, to the stakes at Del Mar a little bit more than you would if it were a, a Churchill or Keeneland Breeders' Cup? Not really. I think I just pay attention a lot to the two-year-olds in California because Baffert always seems to have some, and then they go to the, the American Pharaoh, the preps at Santa Anita. I just really pay grass horses, and we all know grass horses in California just don't stack up to East Coast turf horses no. and European turf horses. So, I mean, they're really good betting races at Del Mar a lot of the times because there's so many horses in these races um, on the turf, but I just horses don't really stack up East Coast-wise, so I'll just be paying attention to a lot of the two-year-olds then I'm sure we'll be dominated by one person, but you never know. There might be some up here. You never know. My racehorse may have a, a trump card with Mandela or something like that, but yeah. obviously a uh, big stage. This horse is running in the Haskell this week, and I'm very interested to see how that horse does. Which one's that? Go Rocket Ride. He's running wow. in Haskell, and I know Arabian Night is as well. I think I saw he was confirmed, so that'll be interesting to see the early pace and see how those two horses do off a layoff. Yeah, uh, that's uh, it's a salty bunch, and his, his team Mage made a decision. Let me ask you a question right now: If Tapid Trice wins the race, is he headed to the division? Because he would is he the only one that would have two Grade Ones in the entire? Uh, I still, unless I mean, Mage is Mage uh, running. Well, if Tapid Trice wins, regardless of what Mage does, if he's in or not, I still feel like the Derby win with the Florida Derby second. And the classic third puts him over Tappa Trice, Bluegrass, and Haskell. But no, I'm not saying Tappa Trice is going to win either. I was just looking at the field, and it's funny because if he wins the race somehow, which I don't, I don't know how he's, I don't know how he's going to handle a track like Monmouth, which is usually speed favoring. Right. Like, I just was looking at it. He would be the only two time Grade One winner, I think, in the entire. Um, no, you're right. So it's just something to think about. It's just talking out loud. Well, Arabian Night, based on how that track plays and how Baffert chips into it, uh, even with Mage in there, probably would be the favorite. Oh, 100. I, the Arabian Night has a huge buzz and following. He would, I think he will definitely be the favorite. And I, I, even if Mage runs, I would still think Arabian Night would be the favorite. Yeah, I agree with that. Last question. Barbie or Oppenheimer? Are you trying to trick me here, Ed? <laughs> Those are the two big movies coming out this weekend. Um, I've seen a thousand, I don't know if it's because of Twitter or what it is, but I've seen a thousand Barbie things about this movie. And I don't know if they're really trying to get this thing out. So I'm going to skip the Barbie movie. That's not my style. I know you might take your kids to see Barbie and be a big fan of that movie, but I'm going to skip that movie. I am. Uh, I mean, Christopher Nolan, I'm excited to maybe down the road, get to see Oppenheimer probably when it's released on a streaming service. But, yeah, it takes yeah, like two weeks now in this day and age. You I'll, be, wait, uh, wait. I'll be bringing the kids to Barbie. Yeah, you're a good father, man. That's Father of the Year award for you. Oh, going thank to you. Board. Yeah, it's big we, time. We try to have fun. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely also try to find a time slot that uh, will allow for me not to miss the Haskell. But what, if I have to yeah, catch the replay, that card's so, supposed yeah. to be good too. So it'll be. It's, it seems like this is the first. I mean, Saratoga opened last week, but it seems like everything's really going to pick up this weekend, and then you have yeah, Haskell. I'm excited. No, and uh, we're only uh, three weeks to the Hamiltonian, so. Yeah, I won't have a sheet for that. I'm sorry, everybody. I know you're disappointed. I will not have a <laughs> Hamiltonian sheet. I might I might piggyback on your sheet with the the Meadowlands races for the cross-country pick five, though. I saw they did that. Like, did that get any handle? I saw that. I don't know. I, I didn't do it just because Saturday I was, I was out of pocket, so I knew I wouldn't be able to follow along, and I didn't want to get the races wrong because I was – you know, I just hadn't tuned in, but I'll definitely, I love, I love I'll definitely do it Hamiltonian because it's in the afternoon. 
I never thought Barbie and out of pocket would be used in this dish, but now it's, it's officially the best one yet with Barbie and out of pocket being used. Well, we, uh, we live to dish. So hopefully uh, next week's will be even better with Jim Dandy, the feature next week. Yeah. Well this weekend too, you have the um, CCA Oaks. That's the feature Saturday coaching. Yeah. Game. Who's your Philly? Who else? It's Hoosier Philly, Wet Paint. I think Weaver's got a couple. Gambling Girl who ran second. Um, Cassie, Norm Cassie's got South Lawn. So it looks like they might get oh, six. Do- Dor- what, Dorm Vader? Dorothy Vader? Uh, no, the, Dorothy? One that, um, the one that scratched um, in the Wilton the other day. Um, Sacred Wish is running in that race. I think Dorth Vader's running in the um, test against Pretty Mischievous, who's oh, skipping okay. the CCA Oaks to run in the test. All right. A lot of options for three-year-old Phillies. So. Shuvie Sunday, I think. Shuvie Sunday. Yeah, Shuvie Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. Yep. So. All right. Well, that's the dish. Make sure you check out picks.horseracingnation.com. Colonial Saturday, right? No, Haskell. Oh, Haskell. Okay. Yeah. yeah. How was – yeah, Colonial. They always do all turf. Am I missing something on that? Is nah, it- I mean, I, I just think that's what the horsemen are entering from the condition book. But they, they have dirt races in the book. Yeah, I didn't know if it was a Saturday only thing. Yeah, but yeah, it'll be no, there. No, Thursday was all turf too. So. And Del Mar, of course, too. We got Del Mar starting yeah, Friday. Obviously. Well, yep. yeah, make sure to uh, push people to that. Uh, again, picks at horseracingnation.com. Thanks, David. Thank you as always. All right. We'll talk about some winners next week. Join us then.